All right. Okay. So, um, antiderivative. If I took away the anti, we've done that before, right? We did it. We did it a lot last semester. We did it on uh, yesterday when we do it, when we did the the L'Hopital's rule, right? So you already have a leg up there, right? You already have a leg up because you know what a derivative is and you know how to find a derivative. We have lots of rules, right? Power rule, product rule, quotient, summer difference, chain rule. We have all of those rules that you that we did last semester. Now what we're going to do is what's called the antiderivative. Okay. So this semester, um, like last semester, we did differentiation derivatives. This semester, we're going to integrate. It's called integration. Okay. Antiderivative is the most common way of doing that. So that's why I always start with that. Okay. And a lot of this should hopefully come quickly to you because we've found the derivative before. We've done derivatives. Okay. So when I say anti, that roughly means the opposite, right? The opposite of, so it's the opposite of differentiation. So if I say find the derivative, it's the opposite of that. Okay. So a couple things, when you are finding the derivative, or sorry, the antiderivative, we always use this little like S looking thing. You're gonna see this a lot. You're gonna see this quite a bit, this little S looking symbol, okay? With a DX at the end. Anytime you see those, that's when we gotta find the antiderivative, okay? It's, it's an integration symbol, but that's when we find antiderivative. It's kind of like, f prime dy dx all of those symbols that you're used to seeing for derivative it's the same thing for antiderivative they have their symbols so for example there's a couple examples here the antiderivative of 2x or the integral of 2x dx that means they want us to find the antiderivative of 2x dx is just a tag don't worry about the dx part it's important but don't worry about it. I'll explain why it's needed later. We're not worried about why it's there. Don't worry about why it's there. Um, but they're asking for the antiderivative of 2x, right? If I asked you to find the derivative of 2x, you guys could all do that, right? Two, right? Now what I'm asking you to do is go in the opposite direction, okay? Go in the opposite direction. Instead of derivative, antiderivative, okay? Same thing here antiderivative of this guy here, right? If I asked you to find the derivative of that guy, easy, 2x, right? 2x, oh, sorry, 2x plus three, right? But now we're asking you to go the opposite direction, okay? So you all can do this. It's just a matter of using another part of your brain because you're used to going in one direction and now I'm asking you to go in the opposite direction. So let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try let's try an easy one. What is the antiderivative of 2x? x squared. Yep. Right? So what I'm asking you is what was the original when the derivative is 2x, right? Go in the opposite direction right? Here's the thing though. If I take the derivative of x squared, it is 2x. What if I had the derivative of that? Would that still give me 2x? If I find the derivative of x squared plus 2? What would the derivative be of x squared plus 2? 2x, that's it, right? That works. What if I had change this to a 10? Would I still get a 2x, right? What if I change that to a minus seven? Would I still get 2x? You see what I'm saying here? So we don't know, there could have been other things out here. So when we're doing the antiderivative, we don't know, there could have been a constant out there. We don't know. We always say plus C, plus C at the end. Always have a plus C at the end because if you have a plus C at the end, that means there could have been a constant out there. That constant could have been zero, 
but it could have been a constant out there. So we always end them with plus C, okay? Let's step it up a little bit. What is the antiderivative of this guy here? What was the original? And when I found the derivative of the original, it became x squared plus 3x. So picture this right here is the derivative. The answer, what was the original? See if you can come up with it. I'll give you about, I'll give you about two or three minutes to see. You can do it. You've done it before, but it takes a little. Well, let's see. Let's take this piece by piece. Let's start with the one we did at the very beginning, the first one. 2x becomes x squared. What's happening here? Where are the numbers going? What's happening with all of the numbers and all of the powers? What's happening here? Let's, let's explain from the very beginning. What's happening to the 2 and what's happening to the x? To go from here to here. Where'd the two go? Right? Power rule for diff for, for derivatives said you take this power, you move it to the front. And then you subtract one from the original power, and there you have the derivative. I'm looking for that. That's what I'm looking for. So what do we do? Yeah, Ruby? Over to x squared. Let's see. Let's give it a shot. Say it again. 3 over 2 x squared. Let's see. Move the 2 to the front. It would cancel out. Yep, that works. And then we need a plus c at the end, right? Always a plus c at the end. Good. That works. So you guys successfully did that. But it took a while, right? Especially the second one. It took some brain crunching. And we don't want to have to do that every single time. We want, to, we want a faster way, right? We want a power rule, just like we had with derivatives, right? That would be easier to do. So let's come up with one. Let's come up with one. What's a rule that we could use, just like the derivative rule, right? The derivative rule said this. The power rule for derivatives said this. If I have a power, oops, right? I move that to the front, multiply, and then I subtract one, right? I take the power, move it to the front. The original power, move it to the front. And then I take away one whole from that power, right? That's how x squared becomes 2x, right? What's a rule that would work for antiderivatives? How do we figure that out? Well, we have three examples of one here. You guys did all of these. I didn't come up with any of these. You guys did, the, did these and they work. So let's look at them. What's a rule that will work? A power rule for antiderivatives. So you're looking at the original power. Yeah, let's look at the original powers. The originals over here, right? Let's look at the originals because we're going from we're going, we're going from here to here, right? So the original powers, so you're saying these original powers over here? Okay, but we don't have these to begin with, so let's start here. Let's start here. So yeah, because these are the answers, right? We don't have these to begin with. Like if I gave you another one, right? You don't have these, you have to figure these out, right? I like where you're thinking, so keep thinking that way. But let's start here. What do we do first? What's the first thing? Roman, you got one? There you go. There you go. That's the two things that we do. This is what we're going to do. We're going to add a power. 
So whatever the power was before, I'm going to add a power. Power gets higher. Power goes higher. Okay. And then, Roman, what was the last thing you said? Divided by the new, not the coefficient, divided by the, what am I dividing by here? So here, when I, when I added a power here, right, it became 3. And then what did I divide by? 3. I added a power here, right? So it became two. And what did I divide by? I added a power over here, right? So it became two. And then what, did, I don't have anything here, but I divided by two. So you're always dividing by that new power. You're always dividing by the new power. This is the power rule for antiderivatives. Okay, that's the power rule for antiderivatives. It's the most powerful thing you're going to use this semester. Just like how many times did we use the power rule for derivatives? Almost every day, right? You're going to be using this almost every day for antiderivatives. Add one to the power, divide by whatever that new power is. Okay? So let's try some more. So this is kind of a funky way of asking, find the antiderivative, right? I say, oh, okay, here's the derivative. For each of these, it's the derivative, right? For each of these, it's the derivative. Find the original. So in other words, what I'm saying is, in other words, that's what I'm saying, right? Go the opposite direction. Don't give me the derivative, give me the antiderivative, okay? So what would the antiderivative of 2x be? We just did this one. What's the antiderivative of 2x? x squared, but we also need a plus c, yep, because there could be a constant out there originally that we didn't have. I should probably put that on the power rule, plus c. Okay, x by itself, x by itself. Use the power rule for antiderivatives. What do you get? x to the... What power is it going to be? Squares. And then what do I have to do? Divide by 2. You can divide it by 2, or what else can you do besides divide by 2? What's another way of dividing by 2? 1 half, yeah. Either one works. Either one works. x squared, what would x squared be? So what would the antiderivative of x squared be? What would the antiderivative of x squared be? What do I do? What's the first thing I do to the power? Add one, so it's gonna be x cubed. And then what's the second thing I do? Divide by the new power. Okay. So when we were finding derivatives, the power rule said, Multiply and subtract, right? Multiply and subtract. Multiply by the power, subtract one from the power, right? What does the antiderivative say to do? Not multiply and subtract, what does it say to do? Add and divide, right? The opposite, right? Makes sense, it's the antiderivative, right? Okay, all right, let's look at number four. One over x, how in the world 
do I find the derivative of one over X? What do I need to do? Fractions. I don't have, a, I ha we haven't done a quotient rule yet. So in fact, there is no quotient rule for antiderivatives. So how would I do number four? What would I need to do to do number four? Mm -hmm. There you go. Change it to a negative exponent. So x to the negative one dx. Remember, the dx is just comes along for the ride. Don't worry about it. It's just part of it. I want to write it there because you're going to see it. Don't worry about it. It doesn't do anything. I'll teach you probably later this week or next week. I'll teach you why we put it there, but don't worry about it right now. Okay. So do your little rule. What do we come up with? Do your, do our little rule, power rule. What do you get? You can't tell, but I'm smiling under my mask. Why am I smiling under my mask when you do this problem? Yeah, right. You get X to the zero power divided by zero. A couple things wrong with that. X to the zero power is what? One. One divided by zero is undefined. Uh oh. What do we do? This is what you do. Think of derivatives. Think back of derivatives. Think back when we did derivatives. When did we get one over X? You saw one over X. When did we get one over X with what? It was natural log, yeah. If you don't remember that, the sheet here I gave you guys last semester, it's got the um, unit circle on the front. On the back, the top was derivatives, right? The bottom, guess what, is integration, what we're going to use this semester, okay? So one of those, do, 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 which one is it? Isn't that on here? Natural log on X is on here, but I don't think that one's on here. We should add it to there then. Anytime you have a natural log or anytime you have an antiderivative for one over X, the answer is gonna be the natural log of X plus C, okay? So if they're ever asking you this one right here, power rule will not work for this guy. We just saw why. Anytime they're asking you this, it's always gonna be natural log of X plus C. Because the derivative of natural log of X is one over X. Okay, so you can actually use some of these too. Some of the derivatives for antiderivatives will come in handy because you're just going the opposite direction, right? Instead of going this way, you're going this way, okay? All right. Okay, so how about this guy here? So the antiderivative of one over x cubed dx. What do I got to do first with that one? What do I got to do first? Make it a negative exponent, yep. First thing we do is a negative exponent, so it's gonna be negative three. And let's see if the power will, rule will work. If I add one, I get negative two, right? And then with the second part of the, of the power rule said divide by that new power, negative one half plus C. Change it back. to when it didn't have a derivative, or sorry, a negative exponent. So it's negative one half. Since it's negative, it goes to the bottom. Okay. Okay. That's the power rule. It's called, it's called the power rule for, dif for anti-differentiation, okay? It has the same name as the power rule for derivatives because it's very similar. All right, okay, so now, let's see, okay, so before we do that, some of these here, I put some integration rules, like I said, they're on the back of here as well. If 
but I also put them in your notes. So just in case, so you have them double. Okay. So the first one is a, a number. What's the antiderivative if I have a number? Just a number. Pick that number. One, two, negative 10. What happens if I just have a number? What is it going to be? How do I find the antiderivative of a number? Like it could be the antiderivative of 2 dx, the antiderivative of negative 4 dx. Can I use the power rule? Give it an x, right? It doesn't have an x right now, right? So the first thing we would do is give it an x. So I would have 2x, negative 4x, right? So I would have ax. What power would it be? 1. Divide by that new power. Does it change it? Nope. So you just give it an x. Okay. The second one is the power rule. The second one is the power rule. What if you have x to a power? Well, we did that already, right? We said, okay, so we're going to add 1 to the power. I'm going to add 1. And then I'm going to divide by whatever that new power was, plus c. Whatever that new power was, I'm going to divide by it. Or make it a fraction. We had this one, right? X to the negative one. What did we say was going to happen when we had that? That's the natural log of X, the natural log of X. So anytime you see that natural log of X, don't even do power rule because it won't work. So if I have two things adding or subtracting each other, kind of like how we did on the first one, this one right here, Something plus something, something minus something, right? We just found the antiderivative of one and the antiderivative of the other. That's all we did. So you just find the antiderivative of one and add it, subtract it with the antiderivative of the other. It's more complicated than it needs to be. It sounds more complicated than it needs to be, I should say. Number five, number five says, what if I have a number times a function? So five X, seven X, negative two X. You can do the power rule or another way is you can just move the number to the front and do the power rule. You can also do that. So if I have 5x, I can move the 5 to the front, do the power rule for x, and then multiply it times 5 afterwards. Or you can just do the power rule. Gives you another option. Here's a trick question. Number six, what's the antiderivative of a derivative? That's it. It's like taking two, two steps forward and taking two steps back. Where are you at? For what I originally started, right? It, they, do, they undo each other. They undo each other. You're like, why would you do that? Trust me, you'll see it. When we do what's called the second, um, the, the, um, the fundamental theorem of calculus, that's what it says right there. It kind of it just, kinda, it's kind of common sense if you, have a derivative and you find the antiderivative, aren't you back to the original? It is kind of common sense, but I want it there just in case. What about this guy here, number seven? What is that one gonna be? Okay. 
not f prime. You're close, you're very, very close. There you go, it's the same thing. Right, find the antiderivative, okay. And then find the derivative of whatever you got. Right, so that's like saying this guy up here. Find the antiderivative of, of, of the blue, okay? Now find the derivative of that. Well, then I go back here. That's what it's saying, okay? Again, it kind of sounds like common sense because it is common sense, but I just wanted to make sure it's on there. All right, so what I want you to do now is, uh, I want you to do one, two, and three. Do one, two, and three on your own, and we'll do four and five together. And then, yep, I think that's all we'll have time for. So we got about 10 minutes. We got 10 minutes, do one, two, and three, and we'll go over that, and then we'll be done for today. They're asking you for the antiderivative. That's what the little s, it's an integration symbol, okay? Seven x is what they want you to, so this is what, so each of these, this is what you need to find the antiderivative of here, here, and here. Like I said, for right now, don't worry about the dx. I will tell you what that means next week. Next week, I will go into why there's a dx there. There needs to be a dx there. But for right now, just um, go along with it, okay? So 7x, you can move the 7 to the front, or you can just do the power rule the way it is, right? We can move the 7 to the front and do this way you'll get the same answer. Because if I did it this way, I would get x, so x squared divided by two, or one half. Oops, one half. And then multiply the seven times that, which is seven over two, x squared plus c. Or probably what most of you did was you didn't do that. You just seven x, you added and divided, right? That works too, either way. Okay, 7x cubed, same thing. You can move the seven to the front or you can leave the seven there. Seven is a coefficient. Okay, I'll leave it there that time, this time. So I'm gonna add one to the power and then divide by that new power. Seven over four, x to the fourth plus c. Add one to the power, divide by that new power. Okay, last one we're gonna do today. You're just doing it three times. All I'm doing is each one I'm doing three times. Okay, so 2x dx plus 3x squared dx minus 5x to the fourth dx. That's all I'm doing. I'm just doing each one separately. And then I'm gonna combine the answers. So the first guy, I get 2x squared divided by 2. I don't need a plus c because I'm going to put plus c at the end. You only need one c. So I don't need a plus c, plus c, plus c. I just need one at the end. Okay. And then here I have 3x to the third divided by 3. And then here I have 5x to the fifth divided by 5 plus c, right? Cancel them out. I can cancel out because each of them can divide, right? It's one, one, and one. So you get x squared plus x cubed minus x to the fifth plus c. Okay. So we're not gonna do number six, number four right now, but how would I do it, right? I don't have, if we were gonna do derivatives, I would do chain rule, right? But I don't have a chain rule for derivatives. There is, but I haven't taught you yet. So what would I do instead before I found the antiderivative? What do you think I would do? What do you think we're gonna, what do you think the first thing we're gonna do tomorrow is? How would I handle this guy, number four? Yep, there you go. Multiply it out. 
and then do it. That's what we're gonna do. Okay. All right. So uh, that's what we'll start number four tomorrow. Okay. So don't lose that. And the only homework assignment is the one that I signed yesterday for Lofi Tall's rule. Okay. Uh, 